Hey everybody and welcome back. Right, well, as you saw over the last couple of weeks, I was uh, struck by the 95% process thing. Don't know what that is. Um, last week's video was like 53 minutes long, so I thought that would be all right, but it wasn't. So I reduced it to under 50 minutes and it loaded up and processed fine. But I went back and I noticed I've had 50 odd minute videos before. In fact, I had one for an hour and two minutes, I think it was. So I have no idea what's going on. But uh, 50 minutes seems to be the magic number. Certainly with the software I use, that size file. Uh, because I noticed actually that this newer software makes, for the same length of video, makes files which are... They were twice as big and then I was told by the manufacturers to reduce the bit rate which I did so they're smaller but they're still not as small as with the original software I used. Anyway, um, hopefully we've solved that problem. Now we're going to press on today with finally with the bits and pieces so there's footrests, there's the seat pan, I don't know if I've got all the materials to make the, uh, the saddle complete but we can make the alloy uh, pan and the brackets that it's going to sit on and then this thing at the bottom here and that is sort of everything done then I can uh, take it apart bronze everything up and we can actually start rebuilding the engine oh then we'll do the wheels so what have we got so speaking of wheels um, the front wheel is alloy rim the back wheel is a chrome one because as we know they're off different bikes front rim is perfect no dings, no, it's straight, everything like that. And it's the silver, I presume it's an anodized type finish because it's very hard. So I ordered a back rim and I ordered a sun rim from Buchanan's and they come standard as silver. Fine, you've got to pay extra for them to be shiny. So it arrived the other day and it's shiny. It's a polished one. So actually it's an XL rim, not a sun one, but so now I'm going to set to and get the silver stuff off the front and polish that up to make them look the same. So that's a minor thing. All right. Um, comments. First of all, I had a couple of people who mentioned that the piece about the tube notcher wasn't there. Well, I did put a note at the beginning to say that I'd shortened the video by taking the tube notcher out. So hopefully, third time lucky, it will be at the end of this video. But I'll leave it to the end and then if I get to a 50 minute limit, I can leave it off again and we'll do it another week. Oil tank. I had a lot of comments about the oil tank, the design of it, particularly in the first video. And they covered three points. Uh, but several people mentioned each point, so we'll go through the three. The answers to the comments really are something I've mentioned before, and that is the design for a function not the design just as an exercise in what should be so what was mentioned three things one the outlets a number of people mentioned that I hadn't either put barbs on or put the little lip at the end to stop the hoses coming off again you've got to answer yourself the question why do you put that on you put it on when there's pressure it gives you a much tighter grip when there's pressure in the line there are no, virtually, to all intents and purposes, there is no pressure in these lines. The outlet from the tank is, if anything, under negative pressure because it's the suction for the pump. So the only time that will be under pressure is when the engine isn't running and then you're going to have the amount of hydrostatic head for the tank, the oil that's in the tank. So that's no problem at all. The return really has no pressure on it either not to speak of the pump's got to provide say 40 pound to the big ends but once it's gone through the bearings it just drops into the sump and the pump actually pumps it back at a faster rate than it drops into the sump so even if it pumped at 100 psi it would go pump and then stop so the 100 psi would dissipate it would pick up again slightly but it's always oil, air, oil, air. And of course, air is compressible, so you're not going to have much pressure. And you'd find that when you look at the return in the tank. 
because you'll see it spurts out. It doesn't shoot out. It goes blip, blip, blip like that with a little bit of air in between as the pump's catching up on what it pumps. So that line has no pressure in it. And obviously this scavenge line up to there, that has virtually no pressure in it at all. So those fittings are fine for their purpose. All right, so what else did we have? A couple of people mentioned having the, in, the outlet in the tank above the bottom for sludge. What sludge? This is 2021. Modern oils virtually do not create sludge. A little bit, yes, and they've got detergents in to deal with it. But you've got to ask yourself again, where does the sludge come from? Well, refineries produce what's known as base oil. And when you're buying all of these millions of different types of lubricating oils that people say, oh, this is the best there is, they're all buying their base oils from a refinery, like a Shell refinery or a Hess refinery here in the US. And then they're adding their little additives. Now, their little additives are what causes most of the sludge, that and wear materials from the engine. But this is a trials bike. It's only got a litre and a half in here. I've got my BSA stripped to paint the frame and everything and I got the tank off and I drained it and it must be six years since I took that tank off. I don't know how many oil changes I've done but that tank is spotless inside. Just because the oil looks black when you drain it doesn't mean it's got crap in it. And when you think about the sludge traps that we have seen me clean in here They've probably never been cleaned out for years and years and years. For this application, for this purpose, sludge is not a problem. We didn't need to think about it in the design of the tank. And the final thing that people mentioned was the feed to the rockers. It will work. It was mentioned that it won't work the way I've got it reduced because that little block I made is identical to the way it is, for instance, on the C15. The only difference is it's at the bottom of the tank instead of the top. If you look at the C15, there's a line that comes up to here, quarter inch, then it becomes the 90 thou or whatever it is, and the piece goes at right angles into it, which is exactly what we've got here. All right, so yes, there were lots of other considerations. And if I build building a road race bike, for instance, I would have probably wanted a feed for the rockers, an actual pressure feed. And one of the dodges, one of the dodge, one of the modifications for the B50s that people moan across is that at the front of the engine, there's a, a passage which goes to the oil pressure switch for when you have a light in the speedo. And they, put a, they screw that out, put a restrictor in it, and then put a line from there to the rockers. And that way it's actually on the pressure side, not the scavenge side of the pump. But again, you know, think these things through. What are we designing this to do? And if it does what we want, then the design is perfect. Okay? All right, so as I say, we've got little jobs to do this week. So let's, I think we'll start with the uh, seat pan because I want to know where to put these brackets to, to mount it to. Right, well, so, what we're going to do is make this the way I always make them. What we're going to do, I just said that, is we're going to make an alloy piece for here, which will have sides on it. Now they can't come down much here because of that. So it's just a little, it's just to make it look nicer. It's a little side on it. Then out of the nylon or whatever it is that they make cutting boards, for kitchens out of, we will duplicate that shape. The alloy pan gets drilled, generally three places, and that matches up to holes that I drill and tap in this nylon board, which is, you know, about a half an inch thick and it taps nicely. Then I can use the nylon board as the base for the saddle because you can staple into it. So I can put some foam on, put some vinyl on, staple it underneath, then put it on the alloy, and bolt it from underneath. So the sides of the alloy, because they come back here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a bracket 
each side just in there with a captive nut behind so this side piece will go onto there and we'll put a bolt in. Here we're going to put a piece of plate as I mentioned earlier. It'll be dual function, it'll be a nice little uh, gusset plate in there but what we're going to do is we're going to drill it put a rubber grommet in it and on the front of the seat pan we'll have a pin so you will push it on the pin will go into the rubber grommet there the two bolts will go in the back and that'll be a nice fit now one thing that did turn out which I was pleased about I actually when I put a cross piece over there I did make that just I mean it's a few fouled but that's all I need below the level of the tube right so I want the seat to go around here and in the past I've had to uh, guess at it and it's never worked out right but my daughter Vicky who always buys me good presents um, she tends to think what the person will like you know how many people there are who buy your birthday presents and they see things and they think well that's good I'd love one of those I'll get him one well maybe you don't want one but anyway she always thinks what will the person like so it's one of those things for getting the contour so I'm going to use that let's see let's get it set could do with being longer doesn't go all the way but there's our shape so let me cut out a piece of cardboard and what we'll do is we'll just cut this shape and then we can just add I'll measure how far down we can go I've moved it there it is see going down vertically we can only we only get to there so that's fine Look, that's an inch we'll, we'll do sort of an inch all right so let's uh, cut some cardboard I had to put the heating on it was a bit chilly anyway look at that spot on I mean the minus a little bit of filing and stuff and that would be that's much better so that's the length of one now all I'm going to do now is mark underneath and then we'll do some bends and look at that I trimmed it at the back and then I realised I actually wanted it to be longer than that because I wanted to go around here so there's some final trimming to do there but you can see how it's going to go on and I need to add a little bit at the front here so that it goes right up to there so I'll put a couple of bits of card tape them on and shape them and that gives us that now we're going to put that to one side and uh, we'll look at these brackets to go on there now originally I cut this across square right so what I've done is I've measured I knew that was up against here I measured from there to there and from there to there and this is the one for the other side and I come out with a little piece like that with a little piece like that put a bend in it so that one will go on the other side so it bends around the tube or it curves around the tube I should say and it'll fit in this little piece here so I'll tape that on there do the last little bit of trimming to make sure it's right and we'll as I say we'll set that to one side would you believe it change of plan I'm gonna make this seat base first because I was just making up some little pieces for here and even a small one came, came right down here and it suddenly struck me I thought shoot this is only an inch that tube's three quarters I don't have room I could come along here and make that go down I suppose but George was across telling me something and he said why don't you put a couple of clips on the bottom of this so it clips onto there you know the terry clip idea and um, I mean I can get some that are pretty strong actually I can get some plastic type ones channel clips I've just been looking it up so I have a pin there put it on and push it down and it'll lock on and then I don't have to make any see that would just look strange I just don't like the idea of that so let's um, 
cut a piece of alloy and get this to fit and make the pin at the front and do all that and then when I get a chance to find where I can get some I'll get some clips. So there's our piece of alloy cut out from the cardboard template. I had to cut around that to get it to sit flat. So now I've marked underneath. I'm going to put this in the uh, brake and we'll bend both sides over. Now I'm a little bit short of space at the moment because I've got the bikes out of the paint room so I can paint my frame. I could just go on there. Right, that's one side done. Bend it further than that so I'll have to redo it. switch you off you don't want to see me pumping this thing up and down right let's see how we did with our bending this time there we go let me take it around the other side see there it is on that side and the thing here is because of that but you see when that goes up a bit more that will disappear into there so that will look good now then I am going to have to have to I'm going to have to order uh, the stuff to go on the top so the next thing we're going to do is make our little piece to go on here and then we'll drill this and put a pin in and I'm going to put the oil tank on because I've got to make sure I don't make this piece so far back it fouls the filler cap. There's the oil tank back in. See that will go on there like that. Very nice. So now mark these tubes. And know where that's going to go. Let me find a straight edge. There we go. Just don't forget, I not only don't want it to touch this, but I want to be able to get my fingers in. So that should be about good for that. I'll measure it up, make sure it's right. So let me. Just make a quick bit of plate to go on there. And I made a little gusset plate to go 
on there like that. So let me bronze that in, then we're going to drill it and then from the bottom we'll mark the seat pan. Now drill the seat pan, we drill a quarter inch in the seat pan, we're going to drill I think it's 7 sixteenths here for the grommet. Now I want to get these holes for the mounting pin exactly the same. So what I've done is I've drilled a little pilot hole, I don't know, eighth of an inch, something like that. Put that on, marked it from underneath, drilled that, so I've just checked they're exactly lined up. What I'm going to do now is drill a quarter inch right through. usual bits blunt let me uh, get this hole drilled right now we're ready to drill a 3 8 hole here which is the size for a quarter inch grommet So good. See if I can uh, deburr that other side and then we'll stick a grommet in. We've put a grommet in. So what we're going to do now is make um, a quarter inch pin. We're going to make it out of alloy so we can weld it in on this side. Then that will go onto that and they will press down onto a clip either side. And that will be nice and firm. Right then, there's the uh, the little pin. So that goes in there, <coughs> gets welded in, and then that'll push onto there. All right. So let me weld. <coughs> pardon me. Let me weld that on there, and then I think we're going to do the footrests. So there it is, welded in. That goes on there into that and then two clips and with those two clips on see with those holding up there that is fine all right foot wrists right well foot wrists got the little red battery light on but let's see if we can keep going so that bit goes on there whoops here's the foot rest it's actually got a bushing and in the instructions it mentions you can have them mounted forward like that or you can have them mounted further back don't know about you but wouldn't make any difference to me I'd hardly notice if a footrest had fallen off anyway <clears throat> we'll put them on that way and I think it goes in like that let me put the A bolt through I've got to so what we actually it'll work that way won't it basically oh this is not going to be easy So they're going to go on like that. I'll mark it, then we'll take this off, get it welded on, and then uh, we'll do one side, and from that I can take measurements to know how high it is and how far back, how far away, say, from the wheel spindle and stuff like that. So let me um, get this marked up and put a clamp on it. Oh, truck. Uh, a nice thin clamp actually that I was able to put in there and then it struck me if I just put a little bit of 
cardboard on there. So that's jiggle that slightly, that'll hold that in place. That's all good, I think. So let me bronze that one on and then I'll, uh, as I say, take measurements from that and do the other one. There's the left hand one bronzed on, so I'll take some measurements and I'll go over the other side and duplicate it. Right, well, there we go. I've put the one on the other side. I haven't put the springs on. Obviously, there's no need to do that. So, they're fine. They're in a line across. They're the same height. They're the same distance on the wheel. So, shouldn't feel awkward when we're uh, standing on them. All right. I'm not sure whether I put the hangers on the right way up. Because the hole through is, it's not in the centre. It's offset. But they slope a bit. And I would have thought that was to allow that to go up. Because if they stuck out more at the top, they wouldn't go up so far. So anyway, that's that done. Uh, that's done. Saddle pans on. I've just ordered the foam stuff and what have you for that. Let's have a look at the skid plate. All right, so skid plate. Uh, I'll give you a better view in a minute, but what I wanted to show you was here. Bottom of the uh, casting for the cases has these sticky down bits. That's one of the bolts that goes right through, so it's a crankcase bolt really. I have no idea why these things stick down. But they're just in an awkward spot. So I'm going to tell I'm not going to cut them off. But I am going to just shorten them slightly. I'm going to take a little bit off the bottom and put it at an angle. Won't weaken it at all. I really don't know if, why they're there. Well, do I need to take them off? Let me pull you back a second. Right now, I have here, this was going to go on the end field, but I didn't put it on. It's quarter inch. Actually, it's really heavy. So we will cut some holes in the front. We won't cut any holes in the bottom because apart from being protection, the skid plates allow you to slide over things. So the last thing you want if you're going over, say, a knobbly log is to come to a hole where a knob goes up and catches. So that's going to go there like that let me take this ow oh god I just banged my little scabby thing there on the edge of that that hurt all right I want that to cut. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find. I might just make some brackets to go to this bottom mount, but I'd quite like to. I've got a hole there. What I'm thinking of is have something on this that sticks in, and bolt it there. And I think if I want to have it back enough to do that, they're gonna get in the way. So as I say, I don't think. It causes any problems. I'm just going to cut a quarter inch or so off there and at an angle. So let me get the hacksaw and I'll just do that quickly. And then we'll take this engine frame out of the way. We've got the suspension units on the back so the bike will stand. And uh, we'll see what we need to do with the seat pillar tube at the back. Well, Triumph Engineers are determined to annoy me. Um, I put this on to make sure I knew how wide and everything I wanted. And I'd forgotten that, unlike everybody else that puts their chain tensioners inside the chain case, they thought, well, they probably thought, oh, we can do it so you can adjust it without taking the chain case off. So this thing sticks down. Typical. 
So I mean that's lost as got half an inch. Anyway, the way this is looking, I don't need to cut anything off the bottom of this tube, partly because of that. But what I do need, as you can see there, is this wants to be out that way. Now this stuff is so, I couldn't bend this, it's so difficult to bend so thick. What I did was I actually cut halfway through, I don't know if you can see there, I sort of cut halfway through and then I bent it up and then welded it up. So you see quite a lot of Triumph twin bash plates where they've actually put sides on as well to come up around here to protect this. So I think what I'm going to do is open that up, cut through that weld so that I can just bend that down to get it in there and then this is just going to work. God that thing's annoying me. Suppose Charlie if I paid a fortune and bought one of those belt drives I wouldn't need that would I? Right, let me go and cut this so that we can get the angle right. So I've uh, cut the through there, put it in the press to straighten it out a little. Maybe strained it fractionally too much. It's the goal like that. So let me show you what I'm going to do at the back end. Right, this is going to be the back mounting. By the way, I didn't tell you it's 80 degrees today. So this is going to be a piece of 1 8 41 30. Imagine this is the uh, seat pillar, so that will go on there with just nicely enough space around to do a good bronze seam. Be drilled there and there for say 5 sixteenths and then we'll have two of these like that. Oops. Well, you know what I mean. Are you going to stand up? I haven't got time to wait for you, you know. There you go. Then we'll have two of those, one on either side, of course. And the quarter inch alloy will go on the bottom of this, so we'll countersink the holes. And actually, that piece you were looking at is about two inches too short, but luckily, I have some more, so I'm just going to weld an extension on it. So let me uh, cut this piece out and those and I can actually, I'm thinking also to make it easy to make up what I'm also going to do is just inside of here I'm going to put a little bit of uh, just a, literally as big as a pencil inside so that I can push this up onto the tube and it'll hold it in place while I just sort it and then I can tack it and Actually, I can probably weld the bronze that all the way around in situ. But anyway, that's the plan. So let's cut some metal. Right, well, so there's the bottom piece cut out with its holes in. And I've welded an extra piece on here. Chamfered it both sides to get a really good weld in. So it's welded that side and it's welded that side. So let me sand both sides smooth, particularly this side, because obviously I need that to go flat on that. So I'll get those uh, sanded down and then we'll see about uh, fitting it. Now there you can see I've sanded that smooth. That's how the piece will go there, get bolted nicely. We'll round these corners off to make it look nice. Let me pull you back. And there it is there. 
there's a little gap under here there's a gap under that mountain and it's touching the front engine plates so that seems about right um, I'm gonna hang on let me pull you in again I'm not gonna fiddle on making that thing to hold this on the bottom because it suddenly struck me this has all got to be square so I've got it set where it's going I can measure from the back of that tube to the back of there because that's perfectly at right angles and then I can just measure from the center line to there because this is a symmetrical plate and I can measure in from that edge and I know where the holes will be so I can drill the holes in the bash plate bolt that steel plate to them and then that'll hold it in place while I bronze it one other interesting thing which you can't see but just out of interest then I measured from oh, hang on from the footrests to underneath the headstock it's 27 inches on this it's 27 inches to basically this is half width through the headstock 27 inches on my scorper um, I don't know where it is on the BSA because that's still in bits uh, but it's only 24 on the Enfield isn't that interesting all right so let me uh, do some measurements and make some marks and drill some holes so now I've got that bolted on there when it's all finished it'll actually be bolted up from the bottom and it'll have countersunk holes there so that there's nothing sticking out underneath right let's put it on so that's that bronzed on there so that's nice and firm still got gaps everywhere we should have gaps so now let's go make up a couple of brackets for the front right Saturday afternoon I've had a busy week uh, so hopefully I can get the couple of brackets made what we need is two sort of L-shaped brackets for the front here and then we have to make a special one for under there to mount on the engine mount and then bolt to the bash plate um, clips came for the rear saddle the rear saddle clips came for the saddle don't like them they're too big and actually the HDPE sheet I bought for the base is too thick as well so there's money wasted all right let's um see about this front right now what we're going to do up at the front is simple enough we're going to make two l-shaped brackets out of one inch wide eighth inch thick steel flat and then that will bolt about there so what i'm going to do is take this plate off i'm going to do two things while it's off I'm going to mark first of all here where I think this cross piece is going to go and then uh, this is a straight edge so I can make sure it's absolutely level then when I make the L shaped piece and put it on I can mark where the hole is going to be the other thing while I've got this off is I'm going to measure the width of the bottom engine mounting so you can see how we'll make up the fitting for underneath there now then, that's the L bracket I've made. I've made two of them. I made two of them and I've lost one already. Where the hell is that going? Oh, there it is. And there, look, don't rush. I drilled four holes, the fourth one was miles out. I don't know what was the problem with it. So anyway, I filled it up with weld and redid it. So what we're gonna do now is I have a line on there, you see, We'll put that there. We'll mark our little line on both sides. We're going to drill this, mount this, and then we'll mark there. All right. Right, I noticed that last bit of video was a bit dark. So I've got it bolted on there. There's one on the other side. So now I'm going to drill a hole there, drill a hole on the other side, and we'll put a couple of bolts in, and that's this end done. So See, I can use that as a guide. Right. Then. Do, 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 do. 
I'm only over here getting some bolts. I could have switched you off but I didn't so there you go all right then what we're gonna do now you see when I'm actually doing this we could bolt this one on first and then put the uh, the plate up to it And that is that. So I'll do the same on the other side. And then actually, oh shoot, uh, I've run out of time. So we'll have to do the bottom mounting. The bottom mounting, which is down here, I'm pointing out, uh, next week when we start doing the wheels. So a little shorter this week, but anyway, until next week, you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.